What's up guys and welcome back to some more 999. I hope you guys have been enjoying the playthrough uh, at this point of me recording. I wanted to record a few more uh, parts. Uh, I have not seen, I have not put up part one yet. But again, I, I really enjoy just doing these full playthroughs for those of you who are interested. But I'm trying to figure this out. So we have the flow. Um, I'm assuming we have to go through a certain path to get to the best ending or whatever. Uh, so now we're at the very beginning where we make our first crucial choice, and last time we went through door five, so we're gonna go to door four. Yeah, so this time we're gonna stay with June, because originally I was like, I was cool with separating from her. I, I felt like I was doing like oddball choices. It's really interesting. It's, like Ace and the others are going. it's really interesting going through the story, like knowing what our end was, and like we're basically time traveling, but Junpei isn't acting like it, obviously, but we are. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I'm staying away from her. Now then, goodbye. Be careful. Where we get to hang out with some different characters. But yeah, no, so my first ending was... Ugh. So horrible. What are you doing? We need to hurry. Snake! Bro, <laughs> you you don't see what it's they fine. see. Hurry! Okay, that's or weird. are you planning on dying with everyone else? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? Sorry, Snake! Let's go! Hmm... That's so weird. Hey! How is it over there? Did you find anything? Please say something, will you? Uh, something's beeping. It's just like before. Probably the sound of the detonator on the bracelet. Do you think they're okay? Uh. <laughs> uh. Hey, there it is! That's gotta be that- Come on, get on! Alright. Let's just try to, f I guess, in a way, fast-forward it, but let's try not to miss anything important. I'm assuming that each of these routes have, like, maybe some item we need. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we already know that. Now it's our turn. I'll go first. It's okay. good to not. I feel like it is yeah. important to knock out this yeah. route, uh, and then we're in the right. branching paths of the flow. All right, so let's see what this room's about. Oh, it's counting down. Oh no! We can't go. Back. We need to hurry and. Hey! Don't get Should... I, I love how you're freaking out. Oh, no. uh, we don't... We just... What a great time to freak out. Okay, to be fair, this is the first time they're actually doing this. I know! I know! God! Just relax. Everything will be okay. But yeah, no, I, this, we've done this many times now. But to them, it's their first time, so I, I don't blame them for being freaked out. It's just weird. Let's try this one first. It's weird to replay a game, kinda. And of course it won't open. A keyhole. What's this mark? It mail? No, not exactly. That's probably the symbol of Mars. Well, Sailor I Mars. They are the same symbol, but I saw a number of similar symbols near the main stairway. Oh yeah. So the while they're talking, the let's system. talk about how weird the Sailor Moon movie on Netflix was, because I watched that. And that movie was really weird as far as pacing, but I still suggest to see it if you like anime. But man, we're, there was a lot of shit going on in such a short time frame. The man symbol. I think so. Yeah. I see. Wait. But I liked it. It's got an epic ending though. It's like a two-part movie. Yeah. So I looked the place over. Here's the deal. None of the other doors open. So we just have this hallway. That must mean we only have two more doors. Oh. Maybe it's the room number. The door on the left has a B92, and the one on the right says B93. 
All right, let's open them. I'll open B92. Okay, I'll get B93 then. Yeah, gang, let's split up. One. That's smart. Two. Three. You really had to count hey. down like we were bounty hunters open. about to open a, a door to get the suspect? Yeah. Why do you count down? <laughs> it did. I, uh, I didn't expect that. It was so easy. Maybe this is all part of Zero's plan. Can't say I enjoy being treated like someone's puppet. <laughs> well, now we have these two rooms. I'm sure there's something in there that will help us get out of here. Let's find it. Santa and I will search this room. You two take the other one. I won't know until we reach another ending, right. but I hope there isn't, like, hidden items. Okay. There has to be a certain order, maybe. But what I'm going to do is, instead of looking up anything and maybe potentially spoiling myself, I'm just going to go through this and try to figure it out myself. And that's why I was kind of hesitant to post my parts yet, because I didn't want people spoiling things for me in part one. Uh, that's always been a, a, a thing that Let's Players <laughs> feel like deal with all the time. That base looks expensive. It's like, as soon as you put up a Let's Play, they immediately tell you stuff that you probably shouldn't. Like, just let them play the game, but I don't think people really believe in that. I have matches. Can we open them? No. Oh, yeah. Oh. How's your fever? You feeling better now? Yes. I'm fine. Let me see your My fever. man. Oh. I <laughs> guess it really has gone down. Are you <laughs> worried about me? Well, you're just my childhood friend that I haven't seen in a while. Are you worried about me? Oh, it's not like that. I treat everybody uh, like this. Hey, uh, come on. It's, it, it's not like that. Play it cool. <laughs> I guess you haven't changed at all, Jumpy. <laughs> By the way, Jumpy, hmm? how did you end up here? Same as you, you right? Mean, I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on D-Deck. Oh. Damn straight. But is that really the truth? <laughs> what the fuck was that? What? What do you mean? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? No. Why would I? I like that. She's very suspicious of uh, of me. Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? Hmm. Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Well, the, Why would I hide I don't know it? Anything. I mean, you're hiding it. How would I know? <laughs> you mean like the number of men I've dated? <laughs> hmm? Do you want to know? <sighs> don't worry. Only 18. <sighs> okay. I'm zero. Yeah. I guess I just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see. <laughs> anyway, I'm not hiding anything. <laughs> Just like you, Jumpy. We but gotta trust up, each other. I was on D deck. Well, you do have a point. Yeah, but you questioned me. Why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. Hmm, I wonder. Look for what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? No, yeah. but I, I don't... I don't... So? Uh... Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must all have something to do with a classmate of ours. Hmm. You got any ideas who it might be? No, nothing. <sighs> There's tons of them. Well, if it had something to do with school, then it could be one of our teachers, or maybe the principal? Nah, probably the quiet kid. Or the janitor, or the lunch lady. No, <laughs> I can barely remember any of them. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I wonder if I get certain endings that, like, changes the game a little bit? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. So, we just have this room, and we could leave the room if we wanted to. I think. Alright, not yet, then. Uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of a weird conversation. I am about to say, you, you wouldn't know if you met Mr. Ray unless you went on some dates, even if they do fail. Uh, there's no harm- there's no, uh, shame in that. That's a bathroom wall. I thought it was a shower. Okay, and wait. I thought we were in a shower, actually. Um, so wait, there's nothing going on in this bathroom? Oh. Uh. I, I'm confused. Wait. 
we closed it, but then nothing happened. Let's go back. Actually, no, I want to go back, actually. Anything going on here? No. It's one of our first puzzle rooms. Doesn't appear to be... Actually, sorry, I gotta go one more time. So let's turn... Anything? Showerhead? Can't, I can't use it as a weapon? Tear it off the wall? Nah, I'm, I'm making stuff up. Display case. Nothing to be displayed. Um, okay. Well, that's a cool, like... Well, that's a bed for, like, a kid. Because kids like to get out of bed. Uh, not stay in their rooms. Put walls up. They can't get out. Do you want to take a shower together? Just kidding. Oh, she's a tease. Duh. She's trying to get me flustered. Why? Yeah, I was gonna say when I was staying away from her, I felt like that was prop. I feel like the I always get this thing with these games like they want you to go a certain direction, so I try to go the opposite just to see what would happen. And already I'm seeing that like she's. I mean, we're in this life and death situation, and she's oh, she's um, already like teasing me and being really suspicious. Huh, this ship is bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about 900 feet long. Must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Huh. Even if it's just some sort of style choice, there's just too much. Do you remember what Zero said? Do you think maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good point. I hmm. doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. <laughs> He's bragging that this ship is not only probably bigger, but uh, sinks a lot slower, I guess. I Do don't you know. think this boat is... <laughs> a replica of the Titanic? A replica of the Titanic. There's no way it's the Titanic. What replica? an idiot. Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? Rich people. Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. No way. Rich you don't fans. Do even know how much money that would take? No idea. But all they've got to do is break even, you know? <laughs> break even? Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the resurrected Titanic. But that's Hell, a lie. With marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. Do you really we should go into business after this is over. <laughs> with such an ominous past? It's the site of the worst accident in history. <laughs> yeah, but you could be like, the, this is the Titanic, but better. <sighs> over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd get cursed just for going. A curse, huh? Hmm. Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? Yep. I do. Yeah, well, um, I, I guess so. I, to a certain extent. Uh, what about you? Just because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean that you should not, like, believe that it exists and do your best not to be cursed. No, I, I, you know? I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Hmm. Yes. I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Titanic. Well, the curse of a, a, a man who believed that it, that you could make an unsinkable ship. What? A curse Stupidity. Sunk the Titanic. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. That's cool. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess Amun-Ra. Which was stolen from a pyramid. I really like how this conversation goes, but at the same time, we have a time limit on on, on our lives. Like it's so weird. But this is cool. They say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Wait, but why would a sh why would the Titanic? Why would the Titanic, a cruise ship? carry a, a mummy like it's not a sh it wasn't a ship that was gonna do deliveries right come on i'm sure you've heard of it before that's so weird those who open the coffin will be forever cursed uh, haven't you ever heard that one are you unless somebody brought it onto the ship with their car with their like luggage I, it doesn't make any sense to me 
So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right! How did it get on there? Me, the priestess? Supposedly, she was special. What do you mean? Well, supposedly, she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes. But she was a mummy. No, before that, dumbass. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She almost looked alive. Oh, that's oh, okay, also I ridiculous. Okay, that thing, I, uh, I don't remember the name, uh, where your body turns into some kind of wax. Yeah? The fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? Yeah, guys, we have plenty of time to yeah, talk about this. <laughs> but that's not what it was. Huh? That's not it. She wasn't wax. Then what was it? They say that she was frozen. What? Like Jack. Frozen. That's right. The whole body was frozen solid. Just like Jack, and then he was uh pulled out of the ocean, he thawed like into the future. You know how a human body <laughs> is more than 60% water? Well, all of that water was frozen. Titanic 2 uh trailer that never a movie that never happened. Look it up on YouTube. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Okay, well, let's let's That's let's crazy. spend time looking so at this too, room. Maybe it's true and we just didn't know about it before. I didn't know. Yep. Maybe it's common sense to eat shaved ice in the desert because it lasts forever. What the uh, hell? That, nah, that seems too silly to be true. But maybe it isn't. It just appears that way because you didn't know it was true. She's teasing me again. Well, she's got to be. Ice that doesn't melt even in the desert? Does, does something like that really exist? No, even if it did, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? Hmm. This kind of reminds me of that uh, conversation we had with Seven. I feel like maybe you're supposed to have these conversations in a certain order for you to figure something out. It's kind of interesting. It's got to be something under the pillow. <laughs> Is there fever coming back? <laughs> Wait, is there seriously nothing? Bed frame. She's blushing again. What is she thinking about? So seriously, nothing going on here? Okay. I found a key. Dresser key? It's a dresser. There's nothing on top. And it's a mirror. She's playing with her hair. We don't have time for that, but we could talk about uh, priestesses. Why are you so quiet? We're in a life and death game. Like, come on, man. Video game characters, like, it, it, certain stories, man, I, I don't know. It always gets me when the characters are not... are so nonchalant about a, a situation like this. Uh, but what could this be for? Is there nothing in here? No, nothing. Okay. Hmm. Huh. I just want to check on Lotus. Is there something wrong with that? We got two items, and we've exhausted everything in this room, so you just go stay in there. Wait, is this... Is this mirrored? Oh, that's not surprising. Square tile? Can I take this? No. Alright, we gotta solve a little, uh... Oh. It hey, was... Display case, check it out. There's plates and shit. I do want to take a look. I guess it's the wrong key. I mean, we could just smash it, right? Shit, it's not opening. It looks like tempered glass. <laughs> you wouldn't know unless you try. Oh wait, there's a candle here. Very nice wood. Candle. This might come in handy. Yeah, if you say so. <laughs> it's so unusual to think that. Do you have anything that'll give us some light? Hmm. 
Maybe if I light the key on fire. <laughs> I know, I'll use a match on a candle. Wow! <laughs> Hold on, is there anything going on with this couch? Pretty nice sofa. It's a shame I can't take it back with me. Alright, we're gonna go into the dark room with the candle. Why don't you sit on top of the dresser? It's flat there. Okay. Got pretty bright. Oh wait, dresser. No shit. Alright, what's in here? It is what I thought it was, a plate. Um, now we need two more plates? <laughs> I can't see, but... Oh! Alright, curtain. Is there anything else going on here? Under the pillows? Oh, two pillows. <laughs> Everybody, as soon as, like... A dude and a girl right near a bed, they're all just like, uh-oh. Like, what? The hell got dark all of a sudden. Someone blew out the candle? Who blew- Oh, it just melted, never mind. Candlestick key? What? Okay. Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna go back. Wasn't there... something that was locked? Okay, that's right. I'll be honest, I, I actually just stepped out, uh, and I had to take care of something, and I was away for like a few hours, so I actually forgot about this. It opened. This shit's open. Wait, what? This man... Unlocked it, but didn't open the... Anyway. Why is that a separate action? Hey, Junpei. You got a minute? Hmm? Here, take this. A bookmark? I trust Santa. What oh. What is this for? Uh, do you want me to read a book? <laughs> I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured we might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? <laughs> You know what I hate most in the world? What's that? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. And you hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but what does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Well, see, each leaf from the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. Really? It's like a flower language. The hell's flower language? Well, I guess it's not a flower, is it? So, leaf language, I guess? <laughs> yeah, you could call them Bruh, you have no idea what you're talking about. Leaf words. Hope, faith, love, and luck. The meaning of the leaves on a four-leaf clover. Hmm. So, yeah. I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing, all right? Okay. Here. What do you want to do? I will take it. All right, sure. I'll take it. Sure, I guess. Oh, man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know? Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hmm. Hope, faith, love. Even your destiny. Well, that's not my only reason. What? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. Okay. What, worried about the four horsemen? Nah, come on, man. That's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages that kind of crap scared people. But this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy. I'm a little insulted. <laughs> then why do you hate four so much? Cause it's a half-assed number. <laughs> Not the best or the worst. That's why. Y what? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? This is not some lame-ass middle number. What are you... What the hell's wrong with Clay? you? 
play. Uh. Gambling? You mean like gambling? Uh, yeah, of course. What else would I mean? Um. Uh... In Baccarat, the best possible hand totals nine. They call it Le Grand. But the lowest, most worthless card Wait. is zeros. They call monkey. <laughs> Wait, has that word always been pronounced grand? I thought it was grande. Just Damn like it. The guy in charge of this game, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Zero's a monkey. What? <laughs> oh man, you're totally right. The guy who trapped us in here sure is one hell of a monkey. You know, if you think about it, the notary game is really a lot like Baccarat. And of course it doesn't use any of that stupid digital root joke. You just drop the tens digit and that's it. Still, it does have the same idea of your final number needing to be a single digit. Oh, yeah, I guess you got a point. And in both games, whoever has nine wins. Hmm. The person who makes nine wins? Wait, did you forget already? Don't you remember what Zero said? It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. The door that carries a nine. If we want to get off this boat, we have to make a team whose numbers have the digital root of nine. And only the people in that team are going to make it out alive. Of course. That's why it's called the Nonary Game. What? Huh? You don't know. Uh -huh. Nonary means something derived from nine or base nine. It's derived from the Latin prefix nona, which means nine. Yeah, that's common While knowledge. Radic, the prefix for one is uni. You know, like the unicorn, the horse with one horn. Two is bi, like binary. Binary means composed of two parts. Three is I'm the falling part. asleep. I'm sure you've heard that from trio. <laughs> Again. After that, you have quart, quinty, sext, septum, and so on. And of course, the prefix for eight is octo, like octopus. It's called that because it has eight legs. You like hearing yourself talk, don't you? I see. So then Nona means nine. So, how many of us are trapped on this ship? That'd be nine. And what are the bracelet numbers we have? They go from one to nine. And our time limit? How many hours do we have? <laughs> nine. Said nine hours. And finally, to get out of this ship, we need, you need the nine the door. Nine that's hidden somewhere in the ship. By making a team with the digital root of nine. This game should be called 9999. And there you have it. The number nine is everywhere in this game. He's got a real theme of nines for this whole thing. No wonder it's called the Nona game. Uh oh. Did we just pass out while we look at the ceiling? Okay, anyway. Oh, that was fun. I guess that was the game's way of telling me not to trust four. In its, uh, in its way. Yeah, we're gonna put these in, but I don't know if we need four of them. Wait. Oh, once you found all of them. Okay, well. I gotta look everywhere for it. Whoops. I guess we can't go in here anymore. If you miss us so much, why do you keep coming back? It's not what it is. I'm just going between two doors. Chill out. Oh, wait, here it is. What are you mumbling about? Kind of weird picture. Looks like there's a room on the right side of the picture. Wait, what? Looks like there's a room on the right side of the picture. What the hell do you mean? Oh yeah, I still have this curtain. I don't know what the curtain's for, though. Oh! Okay, there we go. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Oh, that's right, there was the shower, but what's the... Oh my god, I'm so confused sometimes with this. What am I doing with this curtain? Okay... What? <laughs> oh, I'm so confused. Alright, this is closed. Now what? Suspicious. It's just a door... This is awkward. Time to open the curtain. Um... Okay, what do you want me to do? Oh, there's a room in here. Okay. Oh, because it is mirrored. I knew it. This is a bathroom wall. Gotcha. So we can hang this up. 
And what does this say? There's a hole? Oh, I know what to do. A peephole, wow. Figured that they weren't gonna say anything important. Okay, wait, so... Now what? There's a hole at the curtain, but look it from the front ways. What tile? Looks like it's... Okay, let me write that down, actually. Fifth from the top. From the top. And third from the right. Okay. I guess that's what we got from that. <laughs> Just a hole and a, and a curtain. I would be stuck in this escape room if that was how you solved that puzzle. Okay. Uh, fifth from the top, third from the right. Here it is. This one's loose. Oh, that's where the plate is. Oh. Okay. That makes sense. I, <laughs> I thought for some reason I had to get it from this uh, up here, but that's the image we have to make. Probably mirrored. Maybe? Alright, let's go ahead and uh, solve this, right? Maybe it's mirrored? I don't know. Oh, that was really easy. There's like no need to cut that. I did it! Now what's this? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? There's a hole in the wall. Looks like a safe or something. Let's take a look. Mars key. We did it. What's the deal with this picture anyway? I I think I've seen this picture before. Where? In a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. I saw this picture in his book. What's this interesting theory? Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Huh? Man, I can't deal with this. Just listening you talk about it is giving me a headache. <laughs> it's not a difficult concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shape of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. Molecules, right? Uh, what part of that isn't difficult, exactly? Alright, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Telepathy? Yes, telepathy. Well, perhaps not exactly telepathy, but it's close enough for a simple approximation. <laughs> are you serious? Telepathy? Who do you think we are? Kids from the 70s? I can't believe someone would actually do serious research on something like that. Yes, I agree. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understood it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it said. It was probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier from some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. There's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so, I... Um... Anyway, I saw a picture like that one in his book. Huh. Hey, what do you think this picture looks like? What do you mean? Isn't it just, <laughs> like, abstract or something like that? Isn't just a bunch of blobs? It's just black and white scribbles. There's no meaning there. That's it. What about you, Junpei? Does it look like anything to you? Hmm, I, I guess it looks like... It looks like a grave that was, like, broken into pieces. A man's face, a butterfly. A dog. What's, <laughs> what's a cor... Hold on, let me look that up. What is that? Oh, koi is a is like a fish. It's a beautiful red and white, sometimes orange fish. Um, but yeah, I looked at that and I didn't see fish. Small boat floating in a lake. Kind of looks like water to me. A small boat floating in a lake. That's the front of the boat, and then there's the horse <laughs> sticking out. 
Nope. You're wrong. This is a doll. See? Like the... Oh! That's cute. So, now we know what it's a picture of, but I, I don't see how that helps us. A TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify, initially. But once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. That makes sense. I, I can only see a dog now. These two pictures. The first was a woman wearing a hat. The other one, well, to make it easier. Well, it was an old woman, right? Let's just say it was this picture of a dog. Okay. So, their experiment. First, they sent the picture to other parts of the world, outside the reach of British airwaves. To Ireland, the US, Africa, Europe, etc. I, I love how we have so much time when we don't then, to talk about country, this. They gathered a number of test subjects, roughly a thousand people. They were shown the two pictures and asked, what does this picture look like to you? The results weren't really interesting on their own. Looks like a picture of shit. 9.2% <laughs> of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. 3.9% saw the dog in the dog picture. Then, two days later, they aired a new program on their show. During the 30-minute show, they broadcast the dog picture and its solution. The audience was estimated to be 200,000 people. After the broadcast, it was a safe bet that the number of people who knew the solution to the dog picture was at least that many. Okay. After another two days passed, they gathered more research subjects from areas outside the reach of British TV and radio. This time, they only found a sample of roughly 850 people. Naturally, none of them had participated in the first test. They were, however, given the same tests and the same two pictures. The results were startling. 10% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. If I was in the situation, I would ask her to explain the story as we're walking. The previous test <laughs> sat at a 9.2% success rate. Not the dog picture, however, produced a very different result. The percentage of people able to successfully find the dog, it went from 3.9% to 6.8%. A very significant increase. Uh -huh. So do you understand? Do you realize the significance of this experiment? There was no way the second group could have seen the picture. They lived far away from Britain and couldn't have seen it. But even so, it was only the success rate for the dog picture that went up. Why? How did that happen? What does it mean? Oh, wait, does this have something to do with that field? Or whatever it was that you were talking about earlier? Telepathy? A field not visible to the eye. So, if more people know the answer, then that information will pass through the field. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. What? <laughs> I was just kidding. You really shouldn't take me seriously. Well, I mean, the things I just told you about are true. They really did happen. But the results of that experiment really aren't anything to go by. They could have easily falsified them. <laughs> in the end, I'm sure they were just in it for the ratings. They are a TV station, after all. <laughs> right! <laughs> Man, I gotta admit, you had me there for a minute. I, uh, really thought you were serious. <laughs> of course not. Like I told you before, I'm sure it's all just pseudoscience. Uh, oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. All right. Enough nonsense. We've got the key. Let's get out of here. That was a lot of that was a lot of minutes of nonsense. Minutes we might want in the future. Field not visible to the naked eye. Morphogenetic field. How interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're dying. Now, uh where where does where does this key go? All right, let's go to the hallway. Got to go get June. Where's she at? Is she with us? Good job. Is she here? I guess she's here. Oh, okay. About to say, get a bad ending because you left her behind. You did it. Oh, another hallway. All right, so this is like the same scenario, except we're with this group of people. Elevators. Uh, of course they don't. 
The power. That leaves this. Door. Well, looks. Yeah. Sure does. Well then. All right. Let's open it. Oh. Oh. So it's a kitchen. What were you expecting? Isn't it obvious? The exit. <laughs> I was hoping this would be the way out of here. That soon? <laughs> you really think it'd be that easy? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. Hmm. Do we need a key for that? <sighs> no good. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Anyway, who's hungry? Hey. What's that? Huh? Oh yeah, uh, I guess I forgot to tell you. I found this a little while ago. It's a map of the B-Deck. Let me see that. I knew it. See? Look. Yes, what? yes, hold your horses. What did you figure out? This is handy. See? We came in here. Now if we go out there, then we'll be on the other side of the grate. How about huh. that? She's right. There we go. Here, you can have it back. Thanks. There's a card reader on the right side of the door. And that means the key card is somewhere in here, right? Hopefully. I mean, who knows? The guy didn't leave. What if he didn't leave the key card? All right. We know what we need to do then. Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. Okay. <laughs> Ruh <-roh. laughs> All right. Another puzzle room. About to make us some burgers. Mm. Alright, so let's get started. It's a voucher. Appetizer 9 meat. Uh huh. Okay. Nine plates. Excuse me, princess. Wow. A Zelda reference. That's funny. I love how she has something to say about assuming that's seafood. So she used to work at a, a restaurant, I guess. I don't know. She really likes the fancy things. You could tell by her uh, hair. Okay. Hmm. I have to say, these, these games are so funny. They make me want to interact with every little thing. We don't need to be talking. This freezer? Oh! I thought we took that cloth for some reason. She making beans. Cheese. Something behind the cheese. I saw that too. What's that? I'm glad I... Wow. Yeah, I noticed that real quick. I was like, there's no way I'm sticking my head in this cheese uh, closet without maybe seeing like a collectible item, you know? I don't see anything else though. Is that nothing? Milk's here. No? I guess not. Oh, what's in here? Oh! A rusty knife? I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. It's futile. Futile? You know, a waste, useless, pointless. Oh boy. Oh. We're, we're expanding our vocabulary in this section, huh? Um, uh, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason really. I was just thinking about futility. Huh? Why were you thinking about futility? Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. The Titanic? Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? More facts from uh, June. Uh, it was predicted? No. No, I, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship, its nationality, course, departure time, 
size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats, even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. Mm. This book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. Mm. But that's not all. It wasn't just utility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. <laughs> right, I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But, what if Stead had some sort of special power? Okay. To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? June, you keep this up, I might not, like, be romantically involved with you. <laughs> automatic writing? Wait, are you... Are you talking about when someone's possessed by a spirit, and then they, they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. <laughs> But Jumpy, you said you believe in curses. I do. Come on, that's totally different. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, then <laughs> what the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. Oh. He was doing the possessing. What? Oh. What? Hmm. What are you smoking? <laughs> William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Uh, um, well, oh. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Okay. You should have said that. Well, uh, why, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? But... Come on, let's get back to it. Why, why are... And man, you got Lotus and you got June, who don't seem concerned at all that we're on a time limit, and that just really weirds me out. We already know not to trust Clover. And, and I love how we actually got, like, a hint at that. With uh, Santa saying, don't trust four, four is an unlucky number, or like four leaf clovers are or, or the word. Like, especially since her name is Clover. So weird. Countertop. Interesting.